beautiful library of Bellevue is over 80,000 square feet. It's the largest in the King County Library system. It houses the Eastside Genealogical Library where you can find regional histories marriage, cemetery records. It's also a congressionally designated depository for U.S. government documents. And now it has something else, the IdeaX Makerspace, a special space for creating through art, design, coding, and emerging technologies, a place for you to explore. Want to build a robot? Or maybe mix a new beat for a song? Well, now you can do all of that at the Bellevue Library. And yes, I did say library. We are here at Idea X Makerspace at the Bellevue Library, and we're with Ian Chapman, who is the librarian for all of this, this wonderful space. Ian, Ian. This is not my mother's library. It's not even my library as a child. What is this? This is the Bellevue Library IdeaX Makerspace. And I would challenge that. I would say that this is a space for everyone, for everyone's sort of creative outlet, for everyone who wants to learn how to do something new, for everyone who wants, to, yeah, like you said, like to create, create music, to create art, to learn something, like, to learn how to like make an app, to learn how to like do digital design. Anyone who wants to prototype their next amazing invention on our laser printer, it's it's for everyone. Well, there is definitely a lot here that everyone can enjoy, like a robot that solves a Rubik's cube puzzle, and dare I say, it solves it much faster than a lot of us might. And take a look at these faces. Whether they solve it themselves or not, watching this robot is a lot of fun. That is awesome! And that's not the only robot you'll find here. How about a rover? Basically, they sort of like program this to like run around and then avoid bumping into things. Because this will sense it once, it, once, you, once you get to, yeah, like within like 10 centimeters or something like that, um, it'll just say, okay, stop, all right, back up, turn, and then go the other direction. But, yeah. Now, just when did pens become 3D? Yeah, you can do a lot more than write a letter with these. And at the Makerspace, if you don't know how to do something, just ask. Basically, one button, turn it on, wait for that to turn green. Once it turns green, then it is warmed up and it can melt the filament as it goes in. The library staff can help you get started on many of these technologies. They also offer classes to help you learn others. We'll have classes on um, sewing. We'll have classes on um, like laser cutting and like, like it's basically like design and, and fiber arts. We'll have classes on robotics. We have like a circuit club that meets. And you can build just about anything with a circuit board, right? Including a digital guitar. Do you love music? Well, in this recording booth, you can mix your own digital beat or record a song or a podcast. And if you like to make music the traditional way, you can learn to play one of these. Yep, there are ukulele classes for beginners. So this makerspace is part of IDX, which is a program uh, that uh, program that started within our mobile services several years ago uh, to take out emerging technology to into the community and into our libraries. So if a library wanted to run a program on robotics, they could get our robotics kit and and either get an outside presenter or just have that program themselves or take that out to a school, to a park, just to take like all access to emerging technologies out to the whole community. Now, the community can also come here to the makerspace to explore them. Although with some things like the 3D printer, you'll need to reserve time in advance. It's all free. This is the public ah. library. So this is, yeah, this is free and openly available to 
all of the public. We have these drop-in times that are open where that's, that's first come, first serve. But if you are interested you can, in uh, booking time in the rooms, you can, uh, you can contact the Bellevue Library. The best way to do that is by the phone. For a schedule, visit us online at kcls.org slash makerspace. Do you remember using a typewriter? How about an 8-track tape? Do you have any idea what a bobbin looks like? How about a sewing machine? I better turn it on. Maybe I can tell that way. Oh, oh, that must be it. It's bobbing up and down. Well, if you're familiar with older tech, there's some interesting programs for you, too, here at the Makerspace. We're here with Wendy Pender, who is the Older Adults Program Coordinator for the King County Library System. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Terry. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for coming. I should just, I'm just tempted to say go, Wendy, because there's so much. Okay. You go. <laughs> All right. Um, well, one of the things um, about KCLS is we're one of the biggest and best library systems in the nation. And in recognition of the fact that over 28% of our card holders are age 50 and up, we um, established my position three years ago to attend to the older adults. So one of the things I'm always thinking about is how can we be responsive to community needs? And you know, kids and teens get a lot of chance to play at school, at camps, and older adults have fewer opportunities to experiment with new technologies. We also promote older technologies. We have sewing machines, we have ukuleles you mm -hmm. can check out. And it's the, it's the newer technologies that I think are more challenging. We have virtual reality, we have 3D printing, and you might think, oh, that's interesting, but who cares? It doesn't make any difference to me. But these are the two things that I think are so exciting in terms of innovation for healthcare and for things with regard to older adults. For instance, virtual reality is being used for um, pain control, like take me away to the Arctic while I'm being treated for burns. You know, it really does create that environment where you are surrounded with something completely new. It takes away your eyes, your ears, you're surrounded in this virtual reality. I always thought it was for, you know, gamers. I'm not interested in that kind of science fiction world, but interesting new worlds I'm very interested in, like travel. You know, a lot of older adults aren't able to go to places. I can't climb those mountains anymore, but we can go in a virtual world. We can go to visit the Louvre. We can go visit the Himalayas. So travel is a real benefit for virtual reality, pain management. Um, 3D printing is another thing. I was like, what do you mean 3D printing? Printing is two-dimensional, right? right? You run it through a printer, whether it's a typewriter, right, or a printer. 3D printing is more like extruding pasta. It's like it's building it in three dimensionals. And we have pens that will do that. Uh, we have cute templates you can try if you want to draw your own glasses. Um, we also have design features. People are 3D printing houses. You know, housing is a huge concern as we age. Housing is being 3D printed. And you can, well, you can't build your own house here, but you could design it. You can design it. And as we know, learning and fun and brain activity engagement is important throughout the lifespan. So we have to get over this idea that it's just for kids and teens, it's for us too. Yes, and that's what I wanted to ask you a bit about. How do you, well, in truth and advertising, I'm way past the, the 55 barrier or 50 barrier, whatever it is. And I'm, I'm curious about how do you get people my age to get over any maybe fear that they have and come to a place mm -hmm. like the IDX makerspace? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times it is uh, the child leading the way. You know, a lot of times it is the intergenerational things where we get grandma and grandpa who might say, oh, you know, I bring my grandkids to the library all the time. I never see it as a place for me. Well, those are the people we are cultivating. For instance, we're doing a fiber arts class. You know, a six-year-old probably isn't gonna come, but maybe a 16-year-old will, and maybe she'll bring her mom or grandma. My boss is a crafting person. I'm not really a crafting person, but we have a cricket design machine. It's a cutting machine. You can cut paper, you can cut fabric, this is cut felt. 
the letters are cut. And you can even design like t-shirts. We spent a fortune, my mom turned 100 two years ago. We spent a fortune getting family t-shirts for everyone. Had I had the cricket, I could have designed a t-shirt for the family reunion, done an iron-on transfer very um, inexpensively and more creatively than the company that we had do it. So there's things like that too. That's, that's great. It, and it's pretty obvious, I mean, we're sitting here in makerspace. Mm -hmm. But this, these things are available to folks all over King County at various branches. Some of them are. Now, some of you do have to come here and mm -hmm. we're launching this particular space. Uh, we will we'll be launching another one in the south end of the county also this year. Some of the things are more transportable, like we have a digitizing your history, a scanner that goes to the various branches. You can bring all your genealogy projects and scan it in so it's not taking up all your bookshelves. You can put it on a, a disk or a flash drive. Um, but some things are just here, like we have a recording booth. You can bring in your older adults, record the family stories. What a great opportunity. Bring somebody in for their birthday and have them tell their stories to record it because we don't want to lose those. You know, I realize one thing about me is I need a buddy. I'm better in class than I am sitting in front of YouTube trying to learn something myself. But if I have a class around and I can look over and I can see, oh, what are you doing? Oh, oh, this is how I might use that. And so it's another place for social engagement. It is, and it's another place for intergenerational exactly. engagement, which exactly. is pretty cool. Thank you for being here. This is some place that you probably will see me. Oh, great. So if you need a buddy, hey, we're on. We'll be in there together. Okay. That'd be terrific. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Thank Gary. you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, you might not always think library when you need streaming video, but you can certainly find it here and a lot more. We are here with David Wasserman, who is the online services manager for the King County Library System. Hi, David. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, streaming video. I'm used to sitting at home streaming with all kinds of other things except the library. KCLS offers, in addition to our really popular ebook and audiobook services, we offer access to thousands of streaming video titles. Uh, we have a great collection of educational and documentary films, as well as feature films with a real strong emphasis on classic movies and independent movies. Mm -hmm. Well, the King County already is the busiest in the United States, right? In terms of digital use and digital Absolutely, downloads. Yeah. That includes books and, and everything. Yeah. But here we go with streaming. How'd this all start? We're always looking to respond to what our patrons are interested in. There's so many new types of content available now, and we have a fantastic collections team who are constantly uh, reviewing different services that are available. We work with service providers who can sell video content to libraries. The King County Library System has been doing this for a few years. It's growing, is it? Yeah, we're always looking for new services that we can make available to our patrons. Our patrons want choices, and it's a big emphasis, uh, whereas uh, we offer ebooks, audiobooks in uh, physical form as well as in download. The same can be said for video. As more of our patrons have started using, watching their video online, they wanted the same from the library. And uh, we're con we've recently added new services to respond to this need. And it's free. It's absolutely free. All you need is a library card and a pin, and you'll be able to utilize any of the services that we make available. Okay, David, so I'm home, I have my, I have my TV, I have my monitor, either desktop, desktop or, or laptop, I have my phone, can I use them all? Absolutely, um, there's a variety of ways that you can use our services, it's really easy. You can go to head over to kcls.org slash video and you can see a list of the services that we provide. Uh, first time you use them, you're going to need to set up an account with each of the individual services. It just takes a few minutes. All you're going to need is your library card and your PIN or password. Once you're in there, though, you'll be able to check out titles and watch them immediately, either through your web browser. I watch a lot on my laptop. Um, you'll also be able to download apps for your tablet or for your phone. Or if you have a streaming TV device, you'll be able to do the same. And you'll be able to check out through any of these points and watch through any of the points. And in some cases, you'll even be able to download a title for future offline use. So if uh, you're going on a road trip and you don't want to use up your data plan, but there you don't have easy access to Wi-Fi. So <laughs> your goal is to keep me constantly busy trying to Absolutely. To you know, we, we, there, there's, there's so much great content in there. Um, we're, big, we're big documentary fans in our house. Um, 
the kids content is fantastic too. I, I have a, a nine and a 12 year old and we use it quite frequently. So who, I'm glad you said that, who, who monitors or, or if you will watches over who's watching what? And I'm thinking in particular kids. Well, our, our services offer really great tools for parents to be able to limit the titles that are available for their kids to select and watch. Uh, most of the age tools are limited. They're focused on providing content for kids who are ages 12 and under. And in one case, they've started utilizing age ratings from a popular service, Common Sense Media. Mm -hmm. So think down the road a little bit with me, because all this is, it, it's so new. I mean, obviously you've been doing this for a particular thing for a while, but, but not that long in, sure. in whatever terms. What do you see coming? You've got to stay ahead of the game, right? Yeah, our collection team is fantastic because they're constantly paying attention to what are, what are new trends and, and how people are consuming content. I mean, 10 years ago, we checked out very few ebooks or audiobooks, and now they're a very large percentage of our overall library use. It's nearly 25% compared to about 1% if you uh, even go back eight or nine years ago. And our collection team are always looking, paying attention to what, how, people wanna, how people wanna check materials out, view video, read books, listen to books, and um, as new uh, products come into the marketplace, the library will definitely be responsive. One thing I think this makes me happy is that I don't have to wait if, as I would for a book, maybe. Uh, for 50 of my fellow patrons to read it before I get it in my hands. This way I'm right on the money. Absolutely. What's fantastic about our streaming video service is that there is no per copy limit. So if you see something you want to watch, you can be watching it within a few seconds. Absolutely. There's no holds. There's no waits. All you need is your library card. David Wasserman's recommendations for his own personal favorite film genres. I am a big fan of the documentary collections we have, uh, pretty much everything from PBS. Uh, I, I think it's because they came out right when my kids were young, but I'm finally watching Ken Burns' Civil War uh, so many years later. Um, there's some fantastic, I'm a big fan of music documentaries, and the kids' collections are great. I've recently hooked my nine-year-old on classic Disney films. We, we just watched The Cat from Outer Space. Thank you, David. Thanks for being with us. Looking for something for you and your kids to read this summer? Science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. It's good brain food for all of us. Here's a STEAM reading list. 